Netflix. What the fuck are you doing? You're coming like this close to being on level with like Disney when it comes to the levels of chicanery going on with your filmmaking at the moment. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. You have not, you have not done a Rise of Skywalker just yet. But you're goddamn getting there, man. So Netflix just released this brand new movie called Atlas. It was directed by this dude, Brad Payton, the same guy that has directed a bunch of very, very mediocre Dwayne Johnson movies. But it's it really doesn't matter who directed this movie because Netflix doesn't want you to know who directed this movie because they're done highlighting artists and powerful movie makers. They don't want you thinking about that. They want you thinking about the brainless, mind rot content that is featured in movies like this. And this has become a trend in recent years with Netflix movies is that the movies that they promote and they really push to the front of their page pages end up being these weird kind of generic films like Atlas, which I'm about to get into. Movies like this, movies like that Extraction series with Chris Hemsworth, just movies that don't have these big directors or writers or really any extreme talents behind them and end up being generic nothing burgers of films, but maybe to the mindless generic audiences out there, they find some value in these things. Part of the reason why the film industry is kind of failing right now, I made a whole video on it yesterday talking about Furiosa and all that shit, so go look, go check that video out. And this movie's no different. Uh, Atlas, let me just get this out of the way right, right at the beginning beginning here. This is, this is a pile of shit. It's a pile of shit. This is our, maybe the worst movie of the year. Maybe Madam Web's a little bit worse. We'll have that conversation by the end of the year. But this is a dreadful, dreadful film, and I am not going to be very nice to this one because this was made to Netflix. Usually with bad movies, I'll be nicer on this channel. I'm not trying to put anybody down because I've made films. I understand how difficult it is to make films. I even understand, even though I've never experienced this, but I understand how hard it is to make films at the studio level with studios like Netflix when they're breathing down your necks. So I try not to be too mean, but I have to be mean with this one because this is a stinky pile of poop. So Atlas is a film that stars Jennifer Lopez, who plays this woman in the near future in this world that currently is being taken over by AI. It's a film about AI. We get a bunch of these, and it's another standard AI movie. You have this bad, evil AI terrorist played by Simu Liu, who is doing some bad things, and Jennifer Lopez and a bunch of other people are going to this planet to go capture him, and you have this whole aspect that's kind of like Titanfall 2, where she's kind of merged with the AI of this big mech machine, and she has to go through this planet, find the bad guy, and save the world. Very simple plot, very basic, and something that we've seen a million times done a million times better. This movie is essentially kind of what we got in last year's movie, The Creator. It's essentially what we've gotten in a billion movies like this, except all of those movies do everything better. This movie is visually boring. It is as boring as it could possibly get. There is no unique footprint here when it comes to the cinematography. Every shot is bland. Every scene is kind of washed out by this ugly digital filmmaking that they're using here. Like, this movie is the, one of the first movies in a while that I've looked at and go... Man, shooting on digital, it doesn't look that great. The actual worlds here look uninteresting. The way they build up this world is never as intriguing as I think the people who were behind this movie thought it would be. The world building here feels like a C-tier MCU movie style of world building. It's just never, never engaging at all. And then we get to the story and the plot here, I guess on paper as a generic plot, this sort of weird revenge story that mixes in AI and sci-fi, it could work on paper, but this story is just not well written enough to be engaging, and that's for a multitude of different reasons. First off, the characters here. Our main character here is not likable at all. Atlas, played by J-Lo, is one of the most unlikable protagonists I've seen in a movie in quite some time. Now, I do not know if this is because of the script, because the script presents this character to be this extremely annoying, sort of arrogant, but terrified character, or if it's because J-Lo just kind of comes off like that in her performance. Now, J-Lo is an actress that I actually like. I respect her as an artist, I think she does put out a lot of good work, but in her movies and her performances that have worked extremely well, she plays into a certain type of character mold, and I do not think this character was written in a way that really highlights her strengths as a performer. I think this was a character that was written for many other actresses, but for J-Lo, it was kind of a miscast, and she plays this role how she would play a J-Lo role typically, but it does not work. It just makes the character feel unsympathetic and just not an enjoyable character to watch. She's not like in the slightest. You have Mark Strong in this movie, who's an actor that I love, completely misused. Like, he's in this movie, playing like this commander dude, and he's given nothing. He does nothing in this movie. He's in this movie, so people could say, Mark Strong is in this film. Come watch it. He does nothing else. Sterling K. Brown, who was just nominated for an Oscar. I think the world of this man, I think he is breaking through right now and becoming one of these big actors that we could really look forward to every time he puts out a performance. And he is probably the best part of this movie. He gives it his all. He puts in a lot of effort. But like, like Mark Strong, not given much to work with here, although his character was probably my favorite part of this entire film. Then you have Simu Liu. Listen, I love Simu Liu. The guy has a lot of passion and enthusiasm for this whole thing. 
But man, what the fuck are you doing in this film, bro? Dude, I don't know what he's doing in this film. I think he went into this thinking, God damn it, I'm going to play the most iconic villain of 2024. This sick fuck, this crazy AI bot that has a sense of actual wisdom to him. This sense of, I know what I'm doing is right, but is still this, you know, unpredictable, fucked up AI creation that could be terrifying, but also very calm and authentic, and it does not work at all. It ends up coming off as just a mess. I don't want to say overacting, because the script, particularly around his character, is so bad, there is legitimately a scene later in the movie where Jennifer Lopez is tied up, and he gives the most generic bad guy explaining his motive speech I have ever seen in my life. There's literally a back and forth where the character of Jennifer Lopez, she's going, wait, you predicted all of this? He goes, I did. Do you think I predicted that? And she goes, wait, that thing? He goes, I did that as well. Did you also predict that and that and you knew this was gonna happen? And he goes, yes, I did. I did predict all that. It is just so unfathomably, it is just so poorly written and, and the performance here just does not do much more to add to the poorly written stuff. It, 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 if anything, it makes it worse. And it's just hilarious, if anything. It's more funny than it is bad. And that's the one thing maybe I could say about aspects of this film, like Simu Liu, is that it's so goofy and so bad that you could laugh at it. But most of this movie is not that. This is not a Madame Web where you could laugh at the movie and have a good time with it. Most of this movie is just a drag. It's boring. Boring action sequences that are so poorly strategized and put together. Like, there's a whole battle sequence early in the movie where J-Lo's character is standing in the middle of this kind of field where all these different people have died. And she's in her mech, and all of the bad guys guys are just now moving in on her and they're literally like right in front of her but they don't see her instead they're focusing on all the dead AIs that are around her and they don't see her until she like makes her move but they're right fucking there and it just immediately tells you that this movie is not fucking serious that the people involved in this movie were not being very serious that they did not give a shit because that is a very simple steam that like literally a simple direction choice could make that a more cohesive action sequence. Instead, you, you're like, what, the villains are idiots? They're morons? Is J-Lo a moron? Why even create a scene like that that's so stupid? And this movie's littered, I know it's a very small example, but this movie is littered with weird, you know, sh cohesive mistakes here in just some of the direction. And like I said, the direction here, I just don't understand a lot of the choices. You get a lot of really just nauseating camera shots. There's a sequence earlier in the movie where JLo's landing on this planet. She's just absolutely miserable. It's one of the things I hate about her character is that she's just miserable the whole freaking movie and she's terrified as she's going down into this planet. And I swear to God, the camera shot in this entire sequence is this. <laughs> And a lot of the movie is shot like that. Like, it's just, it's mind-boggling. And this is the movie that Netflix decides to make. This is the movie that Netflix decides to put out on its streamers. This is what Netflix thinks viewers want to see. And maybe it is, because it ended up being number one on movies on Netflix. So everybody's watching this thing. It seems to be what Netflix thinks general audiences want. And if they're right about that, that is sad. You all need to watch better movies because this is getting fucking ridiculous. Right now you have Furiosa out in movie theaters and nobody's seeing it. That is a masterpiece of a film. It is an epic piece of work from George Miller and you fuckers are watching this instead and it's going to make Netflix feel like they should make more shit like this to go right to Netflix because this movie's not made for the big screen. No, 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 no. This movie is not made for movie theaters. This movie is made for the small screen. And by small screen, I mean your cell phones. And by cell phones, I mean watching this movie on your phone while you're taking a shit. And when I mean watching this movie while you're taking a shit, I mean watching it and then clicking off of it, realizing that it is a boring, miserable fucking movie, and immediately scrolling through the other endless amounts of brain rot that social media has to offer while you're dropping a tremendous poop. Because that's what this movie is, and that's what a lot of Netflix is producing right now. This is a movie that they're going to market, they're going to push, they're not going to put in theaters, which is great, thank God, keep this out of theaters, but they're going to push to all of you as a big mega film, and they're going to brainwash you into thinking this is the best that Hollywood has to offer. And then they'll release a film like The Killer, David Fincher's brand new movie, which is a great film, and they're not going to market it at all, they're not going to push it, they don't want you to watch that, because that's good movies, that is a good movie. We don't want you watching good movies, we want you watching Brain Rot. That's what we want. We want a brain rot society into thinking this is art. Well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, this movie is not art. This movie is poop. So that's why I'm going to give Atlas a 1 out of 5. It is a mega poop. It is a mega shit. And this is a movie that is going to be on my top 10 worst movies of the year list when we get to the end of the year. It might even be number one. We'll see. I enjoyed Madam Web because it was so bad that it was enjoyable to watch. This movie, I just felt 
I just felt disgusted. And I didn't watch it while I was pooping. Maybe I should have. That's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, turn on notifications. I post every single day. I'll see you guys in the next one.